welcome back. This is Insights. And my guest today is Mrs. Joan Isioma Okorodudu. Great to have you on Insights. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. glad to be here. So how was it like growing up in the midst of civil war? How, what memories does that trigger in you? Um, I can clearly remember in Enugu, um, I was very young and my father came in one day and he said, we have to leave. I mean, we're like, we're in one of the most beautiful schools. I can remember All Saints Primary School. We used to go to Holy Ghost Cathedral. I mean, it was like, how many years ago? Um, 50 something years ago. But um, basically, I think about 50 years ago because um, I was born in 58. And we had the fondest memory of our childhood because, you know, my daddy had, you know, one of the best cars. I remember the, I still remember the, the plate number LG69, wow. Austin Westminster. We had the greatest, I mean, we had, we were living in the most beautiful place, you know, uh, in the, you know, there's a place called Ekulu, you know, the hills and everything. And all of a sudden bombs were dropping, you know, uh, from the Nigerian side. And I remember the day um, Major Nzogo walked into our house, uh, saw my little brother and called him Nzogo. And he had like this plaster all over his hand, you know, with his cap. And I can remember wow. uh, him telling my daddy that he had to take us back to, uh, to Nigeria. Mm. Okay. And then, of course, you know, with the Delta Ebos, then we didn't know which, where to fit in, you know. Mm. So my daddy brought us back. You know, we still saw a bit of the world, like a lot of the world. Mm. And when we're coming back on the road, you know, where more junctions shoot out everywhere. And we finally got to my village on Icholona, and my daddy just dropped us. And then the, the Af Nigerian side came in and started asking us questions, where is our dad? And my daddy was in the, you know, in the attic of my grandfather's house. And immediately they left, my daddy had to go back to Biafra. Wow. Uh, we didn't see him until the end of the war. And it was so sad because my uncle, we lost my uncle during the war. Mm. But you know, then we, the new phase of our life now started, you know, Growing up with fork and knife, nice table and everything, mm. and coming back to the village, of course my grandfather had all those things, mm. but we now had to end up in my mother's village, and it was just, it was, a, it was an experience. Wow, yeah. so an experience. Mm. You know, at the time in your life, you were known for sports. Mm. So how did you venture into fashion? Yeah, I was a tomboy when I was growing up, and I liked... You were? Yeah, you I like in the midst of boys. Yes, I like you know doing things that boys you know playing hockey, playing soccer. Even mm. when before soccer started for women, I was playing ball. You know, doing all sort of jumping and everything. And so that was my way of forgetting Biafra. My way of forgetting Biafra was okay, taking up sports in mm. uh, in, in the village school. You know, and of course the great man Obumudia, Samuel Osagbubu Obumudia. Mm. Uh, started a program, you know, for, for athletes. And I started running and all of a sudden he took me out of the village school and came back to the city, Benin City, mm -hmm. and put us in a school in Benin City. Uh, it was my way of, you know, forgetting what was happening to us, you mm -hmm. know, during that period. So I started running. And uh, the first National Sports Festival, I was young, mm -hmm. in 1973, and so uh, we went as observer. I mean, that, great, that, that man was just a great man, mm -hmm. And then in 1977, we, I, I did the Kaduna Sports Festival. Mm -hmm. I won the gold in 100 meters hurdles. Mm -hmm. I also won a gold in 4x400 mm -hmm. for uh, Bendel State, the then Bendel State. Yeah. 73 was Midwest State, mm -hmm. then uh, 77 was Bendel State. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, I won a gold in hockey, mm. and um, that was the beginning of uh, whatever for me. And uh, of course, the world started looking at me, and mm. um, Boston University came calling. Yeah. And Boston University sent me a full scholarship. Mm. And at that time, you don't really go to America and stay, mm. you know. So they sent me a full scholarship and a ticket, and I said, no, I'm not interested. Mm. I was, uh, and then I got a, a admission to Unibed. Mm. So eventually I said, okay, let me go and see if I would like it. It's not like now people are queuing up at the embassy. <laughs> I went uh, and I liked it, you know, and okay, I decided to stay. Hmm. So that was the sojourn of my athletic career. Wow. Now you're the founder of Nigerian Nest Supermodel. Mm -hmm. What is the motivation behind that? And what challenges did you have to face coming up with that idea? Uh, well, 
challenges. Oh boy. <laughs> um, I will tell you that when I was growing up, mm. I was a tomboy, but I was also very beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So people see me in shorts and sneakers and actually they, you were a one time beauty queen yeah i was um i was miss nigeria kaduna and miss nigeria first runner up yeah and i went into miss nigeria not, not because i thought i was so beautiful but i saw two cars mm. and i told myself i'm beautiful enough to get one of these cars which i did <laughs> you know but the thing is doubling into uh fashion mm. in university i used to do makeup you know mm. i would, you know want to go out for party mm. uh, i was doing makeup for my friends mm. you know at boston university yeah. and you know my friends are okay, bimbo kadoso you know bimbo la benson eki binedio she was a key on your say then mm. you know we're all you know at that time the pride of being a nigerian was just too much mm. you know on, on campus people used to call us the african princesses mm. you know african queens mm. and you know but things have changed now you know, so I decided that, you know, I would like to double into fashion. Yeah. So in 1990, I was in Wilmington, Delaware, and this Ankara thing had been there before. People mm. just thought that this is the time, you know, the, this Ankara craze. Just leave you Ankara know. first, we'll come, yeah. to, okay. come to that. Okay. <laughs> so I decided that you know, I have to do fashion. I liked doing fashion. I went into uh, Miss Nigeria. And that was the beginning of my, actually, my stint with fashion. Hmm. So how long have you been organizing Nigerian Less Supermodel? Uh, like, you, you won't believe this. When I tell people this, they say, oh, yeah. Nigeria's Next Supermodel came as a vision. Mm. Okay. Uh, my, uh, my pastor we went for a retreat in, in, in Ghana. Mm. And the man of God called me, you know, and said, huh. Are you trying to do anything in modeling? I said, mm, modeling, no. He said, no, I can see you doing something in modeling. Mm. He said, what about fashion? I said, yes, I'm thinking of bringing back my fashion brand mm. uh, because I was in fashion before and I decided, okay, maybe I should bring He said, no, I see you with youths going to China. Mm. Then I said, no, I'm not going to deal with this pastor again. I said, he's, this pastor, <laughs> I know, I, I don't want anybody putting things in my head. I don't think he knows what he's saying. You know, and we came back to Nigeria. And I decided to launch my brand, House of Jola. Mm. My cousin in the University of Ife now said, oh, auntie, this is my friend, Bumi Ademokoya. You need to see her. She looks like a model, blah, blah, blah. Since you're doing your fashion show, why don't you... Um, do this uh, uh, pick her to do your show so i thought i'd bring her to my house and during that time there was asu strike mm. so she now came to my house and i started this fashion thing and then i happened to have traveled with like the mojo to um, uh, um this um uh, model contest in america uh ford model contest and when i got there i said mm. you know it wasn't exactly what i was expecting mm. i thought it was gonna be like a massive thing you know very big and everything it was moderate you know mm. these people know how to actually use money okay so i told myself i think i can do something like this in nigeria so i came back i told Lexi, i said i, need, I want to do something but everybody was talking about tyra banks mm. and i told myself i'm not going to go and bring out money that kind of big franchise money i'm going to give to tyra banks but i will call it something else mm. and i said we said we sat down Nigeria's next top model, no, that's Tarai Banks Ali. Nigeria's next super, Nigeria's top model. So we now decided to call it Nigeria's next yes, supermodel. Well. Okay, that way I don't have to pay Tarai Banks the money. Okay. So eventually, we, I went and registered it, we started, and I decided to do a casting. Mm. And all these girls were there, mm. they all showed up. Then we now did the first Nigeria's next supermodel.